everybody, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com, sitting here with uh, Giuseppe Aquila from Monte Grappa. You're the CEO uh, of this uh, company that was founded in 1912. And uh, a lot of our audience, you may not be familiar with a lot of the details of Monte Grappa, but it's a fascinating company that I've been learning about in the last 24 hours or so. Um, so it's an honor to have you here. Uh, you're on a U.S. tour of sorts. And it's, it's a great pleasure to be with you. Thank you, absolutely. Yes, yes. It's an honor to have you here to like, one of your stops on your tour. Like I told you before, you, you're doing great for the pen community thank and you. for the writing industry, so thank it's you. my honor to be with you today. Well, thank you very much. We're honored and, and part of your time today. You wanted to sit down, um, have, this, have this interview, talk a little bit about Monte Grappa, talk about celluloid, talk about some of the pens you've developed, because um, it's really fascinating, and I think it's, uh, it's a brand that um, offers a lot that we haven't uh, necessarily shown a lot here on GoodlyPens.com before, so I'm um, fascinated to get into that. So for those who aren't that familiar with it, can you tell us a little bit about Monte Grappa, some of your history, what's the company like? Yeah, <clears throat> certainly. Monte Grappa is the oldest and premier uh, company, pen company in Italy. So okay. the company was established in 1912. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually a joint venture between uh, two people, an Italian ga guy, Alessandro Marzotto, and then Austrian lady, Hedwig Hoffman. Only a few years later, my family got involved in the business. So 1912, the company was established. 1938, my grandfather started a collaboration with Monte Grappa. Well, let me tell you a little bit uh, about the early years, because um, uh, in fact, you know, um, the beginning of the century, and then, uh, um, in the 1900s, um, in Italy, there were no manufacturer of pens. Uh, so Montegrappa started off as a manufacturer of nibs, of gold nibs, okay. because all the pens were actually imported from the United States mostly. Uh, a European right, right. company started off a bit later. Okay. So, uh, so uh, at first Montegrappa started to make gold nibs for fountain pens, and um, the, these uh, skills were actually the ones of this Austrian lady, Hedwig Hoffman, that had also a workshop making nibs in Austria. Mm. So she started even earlier. Uh, she moved to Italy. Uh, also, I have to say something about that. Geographically, Austria was only 16 kilometers away from where Bassano is today. Oh, wow. So the so borders right change <laughs> a little yeah, bit yeah. then after the war. So, so it was very common to, you know, that Italian and Austria, they work together. And, um, and so Alessandro Marzotto, he comes from an um, aristocratic family. Um, he financed the lady to set up the company. And so what they did, they uh, purchased this uh, beautiful building by the river Brenta uh, that was formerly a thermoelectric power plant and mm -hmm. they converted into a pen factory. Mm -hmm. So then of course, after a few years, you have the first world war and, uh, and there is a huge demand for pens because pens at that time were comparable to a mobile phone today. I mean, it was right. the way was you communicated mm -hmm. with your families, you know, from the front. So, so in fact, during the First World War and the Second World War, many of the industrial companies in Italy were actually asked by the government to make weapons or bullets or right. anything. Right. But Montegrappa was making pens, and pens were the main tool of communication, so they basically uh, let Montegrappa continue their business throughout even both wars. So Montegrappa yeah. is perhaps uh, the only company that uh, even during the two war conflicts was still continuing doing their business. So, so we have 106 years of uh, uninterrupted history wow. in manufacturing. That's fascinating. So we are, we are located um, in this uh, place in Bassano del Grappa which is uh, at the foothill of the Monte Grappa. So the name Monte Grappa actually comes from the name of a mountain. So Monte Mountain, mm -hmm. Grappa is the name of the mountain, and it's also famous for a grappa liquor. It's a spirit, mm -hmm. so uh, mm -hmm. which which is made in uh, in our location. But uh, but the Monte Grappa is also uh, a symbol of our country because this is where actually um, the Italians managed to stop the invaders during the First World War, um, and uh, you know to avoid that they, they would conquer the country. So the Italian regards the Monte Grappa. Highly, it's very important for for Italian people, mm -hmm. and um, and in fact, the original name of the company was not Montegrappa, but Elmo Montegrappa. But then, when Montegrappa became so important for the history of the Italians, the Elmo part dropped, and Montegrappa stayed, and this is what stayed until until now. Um, also, give you some other historical background. So, the company is located right next to a villa, 
uh, that during the First World War was uh, actually the headquarter for the American Red Cross. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ernest Hemingway was stationed there, and John Dos Passos, I mean two great American wow. writers, and uh, they were ambulance drivers, and, uh, and the company's right next. Uh, we were making pens for the army, we were supplying regularly, so legend says, I mean I wasn't there, I cannot tell you that <laughs> right. Hemingway and just like soldiers uh, were often uh, in the factory actually, you know, getting the nibs or supplies of inks and papers. Wow. So, so, so it's one of the first, let's say, legendary figures that uh, has used our pens. Wow, that's really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like today? Like, uh, you know, maybe a sense of the size of the company? And yeah, the company, in terms of size, uh, okay, so we are still uh, located in the very same building. So mm. the company is still in the same location. Wow. Uh, of course, the building has been expanded over the years. Um, in the 1940s, there was an expansion that is where actually the, the factory is located. So the main building is where we have all the office, you know, and okay. uh, but then the, in the 1940s, there's an extension of the building, that, which is where basically we, we make pens right. today. Then we have also s other separate uh, buildings. Um, the company is, I mean, this is a family business. So we mm. are. Uh, 60 people in uh, in the factory, okay. uh, but these are all highly trained craftsmen. Yes. So uh, also again to give you a, a bit of a geographical idea where we are. Uh, so you know Italy is like a boot, right? Right. Yes. So we are in the northeast. We are uh, one hour 15 uh, minutes to Venice. Okay. Okay. So one hour 15 minutes to the sea, but we are um, actually near the mountains. So at the mm -hmm. foothills of the Dolomites. It's a beautiful area. It's a beautiful river. Mm. It's called Brenta. So, so ba basically, we are located in a, in an area which is very important in Italy uh, mm. for the jewelry business okay. and the si uh, silversmith business. Okay. Mm. Um, we are part of the province of Vicenza. So uh, this is where the the most beautiful jewels uh, in the whole country, probably in the world, are mm. made. Mm. So that was uh, very helpful for us because we had access to incredible craftsmen that, that, that are jewelers yes and so in fact that's why Monte Grappa over time has become the jeweler of the you know uh, bank companies because of course we, we we have highly trained craftsmen that make jewelry you know they started yeah. off as jewelers and then we have employed them to make pens and you've done a number of pens with jewelry yes. incorporated in them too and that that makes a lot of sense we, exactly we, we still do that so so of course I mean uh, uh, what is the most important part in any company is the people. I mean, just like your beautiful company 100%. here is, is, is people. Yes. And uh, and of course, I mean, Montegrappa is a company made of people, uh, of incredible craftsmen, uh, mm -hmm. very creative people, um, and uh, and I mean, this uh, is reflected in the products that uh, that we make, mm. uh, of course, as well. So uh, talking about sides, and we say we have 60 people. Uh, mm -hmm. The total production, yearly production, and number of pens is about uh, 90,000. Wow. Um, our collection are divided in, t in three different categories. So we have what we call regular lines, so your day-to-day -day pens, mm -hmm. uh, with a price point starting from maybe $200 up to $2,000. Mm -hmm. Then we have the limited editions, uh, and they start from then $2,000 all the way up to maybe $100,000. Okay. And um, some of them are in gold, of course, the hundred thousand yeah. dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and mostly the other are sterling silver or we make use of celluloids, okay. and um, you know we're, 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 so. And then we have a third uh, area, which is what we call bespoke, so okay. sumisura, so it's like tailor made. Yes, and uh, so we we produce, and we also have different levels of bespoke, because okay. we have uh, let's say bespoke where there is a an existing base that the customer, you know, the end user can customize. Mm. For example, you know, we have uh, one which is called Extra Bespoke, which is based on our Extra 1930 pen, where the customer can uh, have the barrel of the pen engraved with any picture. So typically, customers send us a picture, a portrait of the family, something they're very proud of, mm. and then we have our craftsmen that actually engrave by hand wow. the image on the pen. Well, first there will be a rendering done by hand, confirmed by the client, and then eventually, wow. you know, it, this can be engraved onto the pen. Uh, then there is another level of this book, which is uh, uh, what we have on a pen called Arte. Uh, uh, this is a pen which is fully hand painted. And wow. again, 
the pen is fully hand painted with the image that the customer desires. Mm. Um, typically, this is um, uh, addressed to art collectors, so people that they have beautiful okay. paintings, you know, and um, most in most cases they keep these paintings, you know, uh, in a safe or yeah. maybe in a vault or wherever. So it's not. Um, they cannot enjoy this painting every day. Mm -hmm. They cannot carry the painting with them. So, so what we we do, we give them an option to to have the painting reproduced on a smaller object, which is a pen that they can keep close to their heart nice. all the time. Nice. And um, and so there's something very particular. And then there is a third level of bespoke, which is uh, one of a kind, uh, where basically we do anything the customer wants. And wow. uh, so we use all the material he wants and the design is done specifically and is unique to that pen. And in most cases, you know, it's a, a bejeweled pen, you know, with mm. diamonds or, you know, colored diamonds or wow. precious stones. And so this is the ultimate level. I imagine oh. that price gets pretty oh, high on those. Yeah. <laughs> that, that gets very, that, that gets ridiculously priced. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Our most expensive pen was sold actually w uh, during a, a charity auction. Uh, in 2010 in China for 8.5 million dollars. Wow. <laughs> 8.5 million. Yeah. But what, what's on an 8.5 million dollar pen? I mean, what well, uh, so much? well, I mean, it's a beautiful pen, of course. This was fully encrusted with black diamonds and rubies. Uh, top, top, top quality. Wow. Um, what I'm happy about it is that all the money went to charity. That's so, really nice. So actually, we produced the pen and we donated the pen. And uh, and of course, it was not worth 8.5 million. It was sold for 8.5 right, million. Right, right. Uh, so two very wealthy Chinese they bid on the pen. Okay. So starting from 300 thousand dollars, and they went all the way up wow. to 8.5 million. So we're very happy because it uh, first of all it set the world record. So it's the most expensive pen ever sold. Wow. And uh, and then more importantly, the money went to a foundation which was called Shaping the Heart. That was actually. Um, giving the money to uh, to to help in support of children with uh, cardiovascular problems. Wow, that's really wonderful. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so, you obviously do a lot with design and mm -hmm. custom theming, and, and especially doing bespoke things. I mean, you must have a lot of talent in your design. So, just tell me a little bit about that process, because every company kind of has a different design process. What is it like uh, when you're coming up with new designs at Monte Grappa? Right. Well, I mean, we have uh, first of all, we have a team. A design team uh, of full-time designer that mm -hmm. um, basically we have eight people eight people that mm -hmm. you know all they do every day is just design 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 wow. pens. Um, I am uh, you could call me like the conceptualizer okay. so uh, most if not all of our products whether limited edition regular lines they originates here wow. and um, so maybe under the shower or us having breakfast right, right. And um, so you know, times you know you're stimulated by meeting people like you, you know, sure, right? sure. And, and so you get ideas, uh, traveling especially, and uh, and then you know, I sit with the designers, and uh, each of our designer has a particular talent, mm -hmm. you know, because some there are more artists, okay. So when there's something which uh, where the theme is an art, so mm -hmm. like paintings or sculptures. I mean, maybe there's one or two guys I know I can talk to because they are the one who can render beautifully that kind of particular type of design. Some of them are more technical. Okay. So when uh, there is products, you know, that they have some uh, mechanical innovation mm -hmm. or some particular, you know, types of filling mechanism or nibs or whatever, yes. they are the ones I talk to. Mm. Uh, so each one has, a, again, different skills. So so based on, on the design and the idea, I mean, I know whom I can talk to, mm -hmm. and to make to make it happen in the end. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the whole team is involved because uh, I mean, typically there's one designer that does probably 60% of the work, but then uh, it's um, it's an effort uh, of the team. It's a team effort, so okay. they work together. You know, maybe uh, again there's some some elements that requires more. Uh, you know the. Uh, input from the technical guy, mm -hmm. so that's when he comes into place. So it's uh, it's very interesting. So so normally, typically, so the idea comes from from here. Uh, at times, I do ugly sketches and give them to <laughs> <laughs> to to the designer. Uh, at times, I just talk to them. Well, you know, we, so we sit together, and and then they they can approach the design in many different ways. You know, there's some of them they just sketch beautifully. Yes, just using the pen uh, or pencil. 
and uh, some some other you know they just work on the computer directly you know okay. on, on a 3d you know mm -hmm. so so we also have a particular uh, software and hardware that allow us to uh, to create 3d models especially when they are sculptured pens mm. so so we have a special system that allow us we, it has a tool like uh, like the tool of a sculpture you know okay you can actually create the model in 3D. So it's, it's really, really cool, wow. you know, and you can uh, highlight the area, you know, magnify it and mm. blow it up, and then you can, uh, you know, add the fine details uh, with this particular tool, change the textures. So and emulate what the instrument. real tool would be Exactly, like. exactly. Interesting. So, so, and this is something that we've started to use probably in the last three years. Uh, before, actually, the models were all, even the models were handmade wow. on metal, not on wax, I mean, most other companies that use uh, lost wax casting process mm. they did use uh, you know wax to start the first model we've always used the uh, metal uh, mm. model uh, because of course you know it's the definition would be much higher mm. uh, but today of course with the aid of new technology so the, the 3d mm. models are created with this particular software and hardware um, which is uh, more efficient in the way that if you do some mistakes during the process, you don't have to start from the scratch, you know, right. so you can right. adjust, you can fix. So okay. this gives a, a bit more flexibility. Uh, but of course you need, uh, uh, you know, a certain set of skills to do that. I mean, not everybody can do that. Right. Um, so, so after we create the 3D models or we do the engineering of the design uh, in 3D, then uh, uh, what happens, uh, the, uh, the 3D design they are brought on 2D, so you have um, a breakdown of all the different components, you know. A pen uh, can have maybe 20 components, a very simple pen, 20 parts. Okay. Uh, we have some of our limited edition that have over 150 components. Wow. So they become like uh, complication watches, you know, because right, they are right. very particular mechanism. I mean, if you take even our uh, filling mechanism alone, has uh, about 20 co different components, just the filling mechanism. Wow. And they're all in different materials, you know. Of course, you have uh, a plastic, you know, for the reservoir, but then there is aluminum uh, for the lower section of the reservoir. Then there is a steel, you know, for the bushes and the thread part. And then there is a, um, um, brass for the piston itself. For right. And then rubber for, for you know, the o-ring. Wow. So, and also we have a special mechanism, talking about mechanism, um, we have this ratch ratcheted uh, filling mechanism that uh, has a very nice uh, tactile feel because mm. when you when you feel the pens it, it's, it gives you the same feeling as if you're winding a mechanical watch. Mm. Um, a lot of the people who use our pens, you know, they love watches and they own mechanical watches and they like this, mm. uh, you know, uh, feel that the pens give, the, nice. the pen give. Okay. So, um, uh, so, so basically, again, uh, 3D drawings, they are uh, broken down into two, 2D drawings of all the different components. And then we have uh, one guy that is in charge uh, just of prototypes. In some cases, when uh, uh, there is, uh, um, let's say, a 3D surface, like the sculptured pens, uh, we want to see how this looks. Uh, we have our 3D printer, you know, we print it just to give us a... Um, uh, a feel of the dimension more than anything and the proportion not of the weight because of course you print using a resin right. uh, and not of the final finish but just to give us an uh, idea about the dimension so once we're happy with the dimension and we're not always happy the first time so you know at times <laughs> you have to change and two times yes. three times so then we do the prototyping so so we have uh, our guys you know that produce each and every single part in our scene on our CNC machines um, so, as I told you, it could be 20 parts, could be 150 parts, wow. and I put them together. Of course, after the um, machining of the parts, uh, you need to polish them. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so you need to, to the, the surface must be perfect, you know, no, mm -hmm. no fault whatsoever. So, uh, there's, an, uh, there's a process which we call tumbling. So, we're basically all the different components, they go mm. in this, uh, this tumbling machine with some abrasive materi material that uh, removes all the marks left from the, the tools of okay. the CNC machine. Yeah. And, and that helps uh, a lot, uh, let's say, facilitating the polishing process. Yeah? Okay. So after that, we have some big polishing machines. Uh, we have semi-automatic polishing machines where you know, there are jigs at all the different parts and there's a mm -hmm. carousel, you know, mm -hmm. there's the wheels, they polish the parts. 
and then after that then eventually the finish uh, the final touch is all done by hand so we mm. have our polishers they polish everything by hand uh, so the surface is must be perfect then after that the polishing compounds uh, is very dirty you know so yes. there's a lot of grease and so these need to be clean so we have ultrasonic bath you know one of jewelers mm -hmm. use you know mm -hmm. those in yeah. The process. yeah and it's cleaned and after uh, there is a there are many different uh, uh, QC during the, uh, the the different parts, uh, the different processes. So after the the cleaning, then there's a lady and she puts on rack the parts and then she inspects, you know, and mm. see that, make sure that everything is uh, is perfect. And then if the components uh, have to undergo a galvanic treatment, so gold plating or okay. palladium or whatever mm -hmm. rhodium, mm -hmm. then of course these are taken outside. We, the only thing we don't do in house is the galvanic treatment okay. and uh, we decided like 40 years ago that uh, we don't want to have it in house mm. for environmental I understand there's a lot involved in yes that, yeah. so 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 we don't want to pollute <laughs> right. we're by the river we're in a nice green area so so I mean and in fact Monte Grappa uh, the vast majority of our products uh, employ either sterling silver which is non-treated or solid gold so mm. so they're very little which is uh, you know like gold plated or right. uh, this kind of uh, finishes mm. uh, then after that uh, of course there is the assembly the assembly is fully done by hand um, each person is responsible for for the complete pen so it's a, a, the, we don't work like a chain you know but, right. uh, okay. but each, each person assemble one pen from the beginning till the end so that is responsible for the quality I of that see. particular that pen. That to that craftsmanship aspect. Right. You know. uh, so, so, um, and then of course you, you, we manufacture the feeders uh, in Ebonite uh, in, in the company and that's a whole separate process. So we, uh, we use the latest uh, technologies and from CNC. So even though we use ab Ebonite, which is, uh, um, let's say an organic material. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is CNC, at least in the first stage where uh, the depth of the channel must be very very precise because mm. uh, you want you don't want you know the, the right quantity of ink that is delivered then to the nip mm -hmm. um, so so we have uh, microscopes there where to check and each and every feeder you know so we have certain parameters that they have to fit in and and then we have um, 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 a profile projector so basically you see um, <coughs> the image of the feed on this uh, profile put projector so it's like 100 times bigger wow. so we see you know that if there is any uh, problems with the feeder wow. uh, inclusions or things that need to be fixed mm -hmm. um, and this uh, we have a very high r reject rate because um, mm -hmm. uh, hard rubber I mean ebonite which is a vulcanized mm -hmm. hard rubber um, is organic and on a rod you have some areas which are not good it's just right. in pores or holes so so in this process um, 30% is rejected. It's just throw in the bin. Wow. And uh, and another 10% is rejected during the writing tests. Wow. So there's a very, very high rate of rejects uh, wow. in this. So of course you're invited to come and visit uh, <laughs> the factory. <laughs> you sounds absolutely fascinating. You, you will see a section of, of the company which is dedicated to, um, uh, let's say, the artistic part. So we have painters. Uh, we have engravers, you know, they engrave by hand. Okay. We have um, people who set stones. We have people who do the enameling, you know, uh, the vitreous enameling, the, um, you know, cold enameling. A lot of different things. I mean, we do all different types of engravings. We, we do use laser engraving. We use a guilloche engraving, a low relief engraving. So it's a um, very unique uh, place. Uh, I would say it's very unique. Uh, on a global level, not just, uh, I mean, certainly we're the only one in Italy who can do this, right. but probably the only one in the world who have certain skills that are applied on pens. It's a lot of different trades, a lot of different crafts yes. in one building. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And that's why you're able to come up with such unique and interesting designs. Yeah. How many designs each year, like different designs, would a you lot. say you're coming up with? A lot, a lot, a lot. My designer always say, I'm a bit crazy because I'm too prolific with, <laughs> with ideas, but, uh, um, I mean, just in uh, because also we have different programs. I mean, uh, and also we have different brands as well. I mean, we have Monte Grappa, we have Tibaldi as well, okay. uh, and we also do private labels. So on top mm -hmm. of that, so uh, for some very important uh, companies, and um, and so 
So these eight designers, I tell you, they, they don't have five minutes, uh, wow. <laughs> you know, maybe just enough to have a coffee or but right. they work full time. We do a lot of bespoke, so bespoke is also uh, time consuming because you need yes. to understand the needs of the customer and yes. until you get to the final design, I mean, it's a process that's, uh, you know, probably, I don't know, 10 different renderings are to be submitted to the person. Wow. So 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 there's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, just only Monte Grappa, maybe we might have five, fifty different designs every year, only wow. just for the regular line. <laughs> this is just the regular line, not not uh, not the special bespoke. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That blows my mind. I had no idea. I had no idea yeah. you had that much going on. Right. That is truly fascinating. Um, we talked a little bit about celluloid, mm -hmm. and it's a question that I get asked about a lot, and I've gone about this deep on the subject before because I don't know right. all that's involved but you know a lot and I would love for you to share right. what makes it special and the process that goes into making it. Right. Well Monte Grappa has been doing celluloid pens since the 1930s. Okay. So we have a know-how <laughs> <Yes. laughs> on, on the subject. Well, um, that was basically the kind of the beginning of celluloid, right? Uh, like it's the, yes, it's the, yes, the, it's beginning. the very beginning, at least in our country. Okay. Um, so when we started off in 1912, pens were mostly made of ebonite. Right. Uh, then we moved to galalite and then celluloid. So in the 1930s, it was the golden era of celluloid. Mm. Um, and uh, in fact, we have a beautiful example in our, in our museum. So celluloid, uh, um, it still belongs to the family of resins, but it's an organic resin. So it originates actually from cotton. Okay. So it's a natural, yeah, natural yeah, fiber. It's yeah. So, so it's a cotton fiber. Um, so the process is very fascinating. So basically, the the, the cotton is uh, finely ground into a powder. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's laid in um, in a big tray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then it's um, it's mixed with the natural color pigments. So if you want a okay. red pen, you know, just a natural red color pig uh, mm -hmm. pigments. If you want to mix different colors, you mix them together. And, um, and then if you give, want to give the brilliance, which is typical of a celluloid, uh, in most cases we add the mother of pearl. Okay. So it's a shell, which is again, finely mm -hmm. ground, and right. it's added into uh, you know, this uh, compound, it's uh, mixed, and, um, and it's a kind of semi-liquid uh, material. Okay. So we, we put it in this big tray, uh, and, and then we have to put this in, a, in an oven for uh, one year. One year. Yes. One in year. In the oven. Yes. One year in the oven. Uh, so this will get solid, and after one year, uh, let's say it's safe enough to be cut into square rods. Okay. So. Well, let me stop you. Why does it take one year for it to cook? Is yeah, it because uh, you need time uh, until it solidifies. You know, because wow. it's it's like a liquid form. So. Just needs time. Wow. <laughs> you, you can speed it's it up. It's what it takes, right? It's yeah. just what it takes, wow. and it has to be, um, you know, in a certain constant temperature, which is not very high. Okay. Uh, so it just takes time. Wow. Uh, but the material is not ready. I mean, after one year, uh, we cut it in square rods, as I told you. So we turn it in round rods. Okay. And uh, and then we take the material, we put it in the storeroom. The storeroom is, uh, right now, is outside the factory. I mean, it's okay. still within the property, but outside. Okay. Uh, but for safety reason. Uh, okay. Because we have experienced twice big fires in the company. So the celluloid store was near, uh, actually inside the factory. Mm. But celluloid is uh, highly inflammable and explosive. Wow. So, so actually, a big section of the factory was destroyed twice. And the first time oh was in 1940s, I think 1945. Uh, just uh, to, uh, the, uh, towards the end of the Second World War, okay. and then uh, uh, the second one I remember personally was 1998. Okay. And in fact, this is when we launched the pen that was called Symphony, and we launched the Yellow Symphony, and we could just make a few pens, and then the, with the fire, all the yellow celluloid <laughs> basically was lost. Oh my gosh! And uh, and again, to rebuild the stock of celluloid takes a long time. A couple of years. Yeah, uh, I mean, when when for example, uh, we want to create a new color. Typically, it takes three years uh, from the time we start, you know, developing the color until we can actually launch the first pen. Wow! Because after the one year, you get you know the, the this blanks or plates, uh, and and after you turn them into round rods, uh, then we have to cut them in, um, in smaller bits. We have to anticipate how much the material will shrink. Um, 
because you know we make barrels or caps or the blind caps of the pens okay. and they have a certain length okay mm -hmm. so so we cut the rock um, in a size which is bigger uh, we need to anticipate how much is going to shrink because during the further curing process the material will shrink okay and uh, and of course uh, when you lose material you lose money because celluloid is a very very expensive very yeah. expensive material especially if you're burning down factories exactly. in order to make it yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly so 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 you have to calculate exactly uh, you know how much is going to shrink and anticipate that and so so after that uh, when the material is stable and normally it takes, it might take uh, as little as four months up to 12 or 16 months, and it's unpredictable. Each colors behave differently. Wow. And there is not a perfect science, you know, into it. This is after it's been a year in the oven. After it's been a year in the this oven. Is another yes. year, and year and after, and, and, and actually, when we decide to launch, for example, a new pen, um, the material is still in, in rod format. Mm. So maybe that material uh, has been there five years or ten years you know mm. but we decided to launch a new design so we have to start the process again so we need to cut in small parts drill put in the oven and wait so so oh. so you need to know much before what you're gonna do with the material right and uh, and then eventually you know uh, we test the humidity rate in the material okay uh, because it stages. has cotton fiber and so it's actually yes. absorbing moisture yes so yeah. so the humidity rate has to be within certain parameter which I'm not going to disclose now sure sure <laughs> <laughs> proprietary <laughs> yes I understand so, so when we know that it's within certain parameters uh, it is safe to take it then to production Wow. And then with that's when production starts. So when all the parts are turned and then polished, and mm. uh, also the machines they have to be modified in order to work uh, celluloid because uh, being inflammable, you need a lot of lubrication during the mm -hmm. turning. Just keep it cool, and, yeah. And also the speed of the machine, you know, has to be customized. And the same goes also for the polishing machines. You know, we have mm. uh, special machines which are set different speeds. You know, when you use silver, is a certain speed. The gold is a different speed and the celluloid or resin is different speed. I mean, wow. this is all part of the know-how. And, mm. um, and then also, since uh, you're dealing with uh, small parts, the machine have to be f has to be fed individually. So mm -hmm. you cannot just work in automatic, but uh, it's yeah. just, you know, so the person must be there, he must check, you know, with the caliper, the measure, if mm -hmm. everything is all right. So that and, and also um, again, it's a very very long process. So that's why time people don't appreciate the value maybe in a celluloid. So what is celluloid? Why a celluloid pen costs more than a uh, mm -hmm. resin pen? You know. Mm -hmm. So there are many ways you can make a pen. You know, some resin are injection molded, so it's just mm -hmm. molded. Press a button and the pen comes out. Yeah. Some of them are turned, and some of them celluloid requires a much much longer lead time for, for wow. production. And there's not that many people making celluloid pens, especially mm, today. Mm, no, no. Also because uh, manufacturing celluloid has actually stopped. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and so um, basically is what you have. <laughs> wow. And this is kind of like worldwide. Like, yes. I mean, yes, there's, yes. there's been some pen companies that have had celluloid pens, but right. from what I understand, the stock is going right. to end. Right, right, right. Luckily, we have... Uh, quite a nice stock. You have a nice stockpile, stock yeah. For, for good numbers. So you'll, you'll probably be one of the last yes. to be making celluloid pens yes, certainly. in the world. Certainly. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's incredibly fascinating. I don't think anybody had, most people didn't have a clue what's involved. It's, I'm personally very fascinated to hear about that. Um, you know, I know you've done a lot of themed pens, right. a lot of licensed pens. Um, and uh, the one one of the pens that stands out to me the most, and I know it got a lot of attention, was the Chaos Pen, right. well, Sylvester Stallone. So right. I'd love to know how you got linked up with Sly and right, uh, right. What, what it's like to work with him, maybe. Right, right. Well, I mean, uh, I I met Sly for the first time. It was in 1995. Okay. And uh, and he's a pen collector. Okay. So in fact, he he purchased uh, our Dragon Pen as a limited edition from 1995 okay. uh, a gold one and he, he, he bought it uh, specifically to sign uh, three contracts I mean for movies and okay. I think these were the days of Rocky and Rumble so right that was his prime so, yeah exactly so so um, so he bought the pen and he's quite superstitious and uh, very particular 
and uh, he lost the pen or the pen was stolen I don't know exactly oh what my happened. gosh so I mean I didn't know him maybe he just put the pen somewhere in New York Wow and um, or LA and then um, what happened uh, a friend of his uh, who lives in Milan who is my friend called me and uh, and he said you know I mean it's lie Sylvester Stallone he bought your pen and he lost it he wants one uh, he needs to sign the contract, so he needs right. another what one. What can you do for me? But he, yeah. went, he went to the retailer. The retailer said, "Sorry, it's sold out. It's not available. You can cannot yeah, get." But we, 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 we must not have that many of those pens, yeah, right? Uh, we, we only made one hundred uh, only. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just a good number, right? Wow. But uh, but it was sold out uh, immediately. In four weeks, we sold that out. Wow. Uh, let's not forget the nineties were the golden days of the limited edition. So, sure, so sure. people were buying uh, as a form of investment. Some people would buy ten pens. Like that in gold, you know, just to, yeah, it's not like to that anymore. Huh? Investment. I mean, of course, it's changed. The environment has changed a lot. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, so my friend insisted you, we need to get him another pen, uh, and I said, "I'm sorry, the pen is sold out, so we we can't make a new one. But what we can do, since you know, in all the limited edition, limited edition is like art. Uh, mm. Even when you do a one of a kind uh, artwork, uh, the artist normally does what we call artist proof." Right. Okay. In pens, we have uh, nine uh, uh, artist proofs okay. that we do. There are different stages of production. So there's like prototypes. So that yes. They're yes. not exactly. So it may the not same. have all the finished details right. and may not function 100%. So yeah. what we did, we took uh, uh, the last, the ninth <laughs> okay. of the artist proofs, and which is very close. Right. Very close. 99%. You know, okay. uh, like the production pen, and they say, okay, we're gonna offer this to Sylvester Stallone as a present. I mean, uh, I, I was a big fan of. Uh, I'm still, I still am. I'm Rocky <laughs> or Rambo, you know, and uh, and so I mean, I watch all these movies, and I didn't know him personally, so for me, it was a great honor. Sure, to presenting a pen to him. So I would just, uh, I told my friends, uh, okay, I'm gonna send the pen to you. Please hand it over to Sly and. Uh, uh, but he said he wants to pay. I said no, 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 no. no. We, we cannot sell. It's artist proof. We don't sell the artist proof as okay. well. So uh, it's from our museum. So we, we're happy to wow. to give it to him. So so he received the pen, and uh, the next day I received pictures. Uh, he was seated in his private jet. He was kissing the pen and you know, like holding. <laughs> I can show you maybe these pictures wow. later. Uh, we still have one, you know, and. Uh, and, uh, and factory wow. uh, and he loved the pen and um, then he called us and he thanked us and uh, and he said you know I really appreciate what you've done for me so you can use this pen these pictures for your marketing I don't mind wow. you know, so, so this actually gave us a big push well, and you came from a good it, place doing yeah. it too that's what's really <laughs> nice to hear yeah so so it was um, no he's a man with with great heart and uh, mm. it's very nice so so we started um, friendly relationship so nice. he, he came to to film a movie in um, in Rome the next year so we met again mm. and then he started collecting on a more consistent basis our pen so we developed a friendly relationship yeah and uh, up to the point that uh, uh, again I need to tell you a little bit about the company what the company went through because sure. the company has been with my family for a number of decades but then in the year 2000 the company was uh, acquired by Richmond right. uh, uh, the Richmond group owns Mont Blanc Mont Blanc just yeah, to mention one brand most people will know yeah or Cartier yeah. yeah and many of the luxury watch brands and uh, and then after a number of years or so nine years we bought the company back so the company is again privately owned mm. and when we bought it back um, and it was just my father and I as member of the family who decided to buy it back so uh, we thought it would have been nice to welcome uh, some other investors into the business. Mm. And we were not just looking for money, we, we were looking for people who would actually uh, help us. Uh, yeah, you partners. Know, and, uh, uh, yeah. Partners, uh, 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 you know, that would help us in marketing the brand. Yeah. And, uh, and so I approached Sylvester Salon and I asked him, you know, Sly, would you like to be involved uh, in the business? And they say, oh yes, I'd love to. Okay, so, wow. so he, he became an investor. Um, just shortly before Sly joined, another celebrity, let's say investor, joined the business. And this mm -hmm. is Jean Alesi, who is a Formula One driver. He used to drive Ferrari in the 80s. Okay. Yeah? So he also became an investor. So, so we started to 
let's say promote the brands more in the area of sports and Formula One and then Hollywood stars sure uh, so we have a number of Hollywood stars that buy our bespoke pens or mm. you know or producers or this kind of celebrities and um, and so um, I asked Sly you know we were together in, in Venice uh, during the film festival, he was um, receiving an award to his career, uh, I, and at that time he was filming the Expendable movie. Okay. Uh, he also had just uh, uh, become involved in tattooing. You know, he had started to tattoo his body, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. different things, and uh, and he loves skulls. You know. Okay. So so we were having dinner together, and I said, uh, Sly, let's let's uh, do a pen together. I mean, you've been painting thirty years. You are an artist yourself. Mm -hmm. You have brilliant ideas. I mean, uh, it would be really nice to, to to have you involved in the design of a pen. I mean, I think yeah. no other actor has ever designed a pen. Absolutely. And he said, Oh yes, I have ideas. So he, uh, we were <laughs> having dinner. So he took a napkin, you know, from his lap, and he put it on the table. I gave him my pen, you know. It was not this pen. It was some some other pen. And so <laughs> so he started to sketch, you know, wow. the pen and the skull, which is on, on the barrel, and all these uh, snakes and lizards and <laughs> yeah. and things. And he showed me, you know, uh, then privately later, he's like a skull tattoo here. And um, and, I, and I found it very interesting. We had never done a skull pen. Yeah. It was like a controversial subject. But uh, I thought that, you know, coming from him, it would be something, you know, that... Sure. Because at that time our audience was very conservative <laughs> in terms okay, of right. design, so so. But I say, okay, come on, this that is anything <laughs> but conservative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 anyway, he sketched it. So I found it brilliant. So I went back to the office, and the next day, you know, I gather all the designer, and I say, guys, we need to, you know, now make this wow. pen. And so, you know, everybody was blown away. The idea of Sylvester Stallone design, you know, a napkin, you know. Right? So, wow, that's so cool. So we, we designed it, and then, of course, we, we sent the design to him, and then we yeah. went back to Los Angeles in the meantime. And he loved the design. And then, um, of course, he asked some changes, yeah, but I would say, you know, this should be here, and change this, or change that. And then eventually, when uh, the first prototype was ready, I, I flew to Los Angeles again, we met. Uh, you know, face to face, and you know, he loved it. This, this is just perfect. Like, I wow. like it. So, he gave the blessing, and then after a few months, the pen was launched. Wow, yeah. that is such a cool story. And then, of course, came out with a watch as well. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Then we made the watch, which was uh, again quite unique for us because, of course, Monte Grappa is, is a pen company. Yes, uh, but in 2010, after we reacquired the business, we started uh, a brand extension program. Okay. So we introduce watches and cufflinks and leather goods, mm -hmm. um, especially for some particular territories where the products are distributed. Where um, you know people buy pens, they like to have matching items to the pen. You know, so like yeah. especially in in the Arab world, the GCC countries, mm -hmm. you know, where they all dress the same way. You know, they wear the pen in the pocket, mm -hmm. but they like that the pen matches to the cufflinks. Okay. And they match matches to the watch, okay, mm -hmm. or the eyewear, or yeah, or yes. the cover of a telephone. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that, that men, you know, have to distinguish from each other because otherwise they're all dressed in the same way. I see. And uh, and so that uh, that is an area that we developed. And then uh, so the first watches were not limited edition, but they were just for this particular market of having uh, matching accessories. Mm -hmm. And then uh, with Sly, we thought, let's make the first limited edition watch and uh, mm -hmm. let's start from the chaos. Mm -hmm. So then we took inspiration from the, you know, the chaos pen and we made the chaos watch. It was just a small edition, I mean, uh, but very expensive in yes. gold and in silver and sold out like, like that in wow. just a few months. Wow, that's yeah. truly fascinating to hear. Yeah. Um, so I know you're going to need to get going here fairly soon, yeah. <laughs> so I want to be sensitive to time, but before we go, do you have anything that you're working on for the future that you want to talk about? Or Yeah, I have a few, few pens, you know. I yeah, yeah, like I have a couple <laughs> things in the pocket there, yeah. <laughs> that I can show you. Uh, yeah, this please this is actually being released uh, now as we speak. It's quite an interesting pen. I mean, it's a celluloid pen, just like this one. Mm. Um, this is a type of celluloid that we call Indian Rainbow. Okay. Okay. So it's a That's new celluloid. Um, it's an oversized fountain pen. It's a piston. I would piston. say so. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> a piston-fed uh, fountain pen, which is a, uh, our 
you know special feeling system mm -hmm. you know you can hear probably the sound that's the ratcheting okay the ratcheting mm -hmm. okay so it's a, it's piston uh, sterling silver trim mm -hmm. this is um, a solid dating car gold mm -hmm. okay which is, is our filigree design so it's still a shape design and uh, it has our proprietary ebonite feeder mm -hmm. and also the filling system mm. but what is cool about this uh, pen is that there is a watch on its top that is so cool as well <laughs> so we developed this watch in uh, collaboration with um, a swiss um, uh, movement uh, uh, company uh, okay. which is called ronda so we asked them actually to adapt uh, you know the mechanism so it's a custom design mechanism design, yes, for this pen yes, it's an 11 millimeter dial wow uh, so this is a actually it's a it's a quartz uh, mm -hmm. movement so mm -hmm. you can uh, also undo the top okay okay mm -hmm. and, and you can and change, change the battery and nice. change, you can change can change the battery so it's um is dedicated to bartolomeo ferracina bartolomeo ferracina was a clock maker uh, who was born in the 1700s near Bassano del Grappa, just a few kilometers away, and is the guy who designed uh, the clock of the Tower of Bassano and also okay. actually the, the one in San Marco Square in Venice. So he was a genius wow. at that time. Wow. So we, we thought to pay homage to, wow. to, to Bartolomeo with, with this pen. This comes in three different colors of celluloid, and okay. each, each color comes in only 100 pieces. Wow. Okay. So there's the Indian rainbow, we have the Malachi green and we have what we call the uh, shiny circle which mm. is a gray with mother of pearl a beautiful wow effect. Nice. so this is being released now i can also show you something which is not here in the pocket ah <laughs> i see okay something which is also quite uh, unique it's a kind of uh, preview because this will be released in uh, october okay this is called Mia Carissima. Mia Carissima means my dearest, mm. okay, so which is the opening sentence in the letter that, uh, you know, maybe the soldier would send to their mothers or their wives during the war. And the reason for the name is that this is actually made for the 100th anniversary of the third battle of Monte Grappa. So this was mm. the end of the First World War, um, so 2018. 1918 mm. and so we're making only 100 pieces this is a replica of a pen that was exactly the same as this from uh, from 1918 mm. okay uh, this uh, the original pen though uh, was a safety pen mm -hmm. uh, the trim was not in silver um, uh, was all made in ebonite okay. and it was a s safety pen but that you could fill with the eyedropper which right. is very messy you know so yes, yes so what we did we developed special mechanism uh, you know this safety pen nice. but uh, but you can actually use a normal cartridge so you can just remove the section you put normal cartridge and this just work perfectly yeah so you can nice so that's really cool this we are only going to make 100 pieces okay and will be released in uh, September, probably October in the US. Wonderful. Yeah. That's really neat. So I could show you something else. Uh, this is uh, also one of our latest uh, creations. Mm -hmm. this, is this is part of the regular lines. Yeah, this, is, this one's currently available. Yes, yeah. this is currently available. This is called Monte Grappa mm -hmm. by Monte Grappa. Right. Because Monte Grappa actually the brand name is in one name, Monte Grappa, yes. because you know, intellectual property, you cannot register a geographic place. Ah, so, okay. in two words, we could never call it Monte Grappa, the brand it has to be one Monte Grappa. Yeah, interesting, <laughs> okay. okay, okay. So, so the um, Monte Grappa uh, pen by Monte Grappa has a vintage logo, which actually has the, the wording Monte, then there is the silhouette of a mountain, mm -hmm. and then Grappa. Mm. So this was a, a logo that was used in the 1930s. Okay. So this is also a shape that is inspired by the pens from the 1930s. Mm. Uh, most of our current pens, the logo is on the caps band. Yes. So on this one, we wanted to use a vintage caps band as mm. well, which is very thin. It will not allow to put the logo okay. on the cap. So so we engraved the cap on the barrel as on the on pens the originals, from yeah, 1930s. So this one is uh, is made in uh, is made of resin, and um, it has a steel trim and also has a steel nib. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a wide range of of nibs. 
uh, currently you know from fine to uh, broad but uh, in September we're introducing the extra fine and also the stub 1.1 mm. and stub 1.5 nice. uh, and it features our you know proprietary mechanism uh, that we told about yes just earlier and this is uh, it comes in four different colors this is a navy blue then we have a coral red we have uh, a lavender mm. and then the, the black nice so this is already available nice in the market that's wonderful you know i could continue forever and i enjoy the conversation i was gonna say i know to i'm, dash so, off I'm to sorry you have to go <laughs> but uh this has been i'm personally very fascinated and you clearly have such a depth of knowledge about pens and history and of course your own designs and uh, it's very fascinating and very honored that you were able to sit down yeah, with us today. It's really a pleasure. I was today. really blown away by your facility and by your company. Thank you very much. And I thank you on behalf of the whole pen community for what you're doing and uh, you. actually educating people. Trying to, yeah. I'm, yeah, I mean, st I'm still trying to learn myself. I, yeah, I, I mean, when I, mean, I sit down with someone like you, I just realize uh, how much I still have to learn uh, as well. I'm not sure about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's more but, uh, but anyway, I would like to renew my invitation to, to, to actually come to the factory and uh, Thank you. maybe we can share with the, with the community. I mean, uh, I don't know. Would you, would you all be interested in that and yeah. seeing more of uh, what it's like behind the yeah. scenes? Uh, let us know if you would in the comments below. That would be really wonderful. But thank you so much. I'll let you go on and, and go into the airport, but thank you so much for your time thank you today. Very thank you for an absolute much. honor. It's such a pleasure. Absolutely. So everybody, this is Giuseppe, and thank you for your time. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, you can learn more about uh, Monte Grappa. I guess you have your official website. Uh, yes, just you check do. it out. We have so many products on our site. Um, you can always let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and right on. Thank you.